Prader-Willi syndrome is a very different disease to hypothalamic obesity. Prader-Willi is a genetic disease, whereas hypothalamic obesity, as I mentioned, is a result of uh, an injury to the hypothalamus. Uh, so in hypothalamic obesity that I mentioned earlier, these are you know patients who were normal, healthy, could have been very active up until that benign uh, brain tumor. Uh, and when it was removed, following that removal and the injury to the hypothalamus suddenly become obese in a very short period of time. Um, Prader-Willi, on the other hand, is a genetic disease that they are born with. And from a very early age, um, their um, body comp uh, uh, composition is very abnormal. They have a very low muscle tone. They, um, uh, uh, they have very low bone density. Basically, all they have is fat. Uh, and in Prader-Willi syndrome, the 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 the, um, the most important uh, or the most impactful uh, um, uh, criteria disease uh, characteristic in the disease that impacts the families, the patients is is a is a characteristic called hyperphagia, which is basically this constant desire to eat. Um, you know, families have to adapt very quickly. They have to lock cupboards. They have to lock garbage cans. They can't leave food on the, you know, on the table. These, you know, patients will pick up food from anywhere and eat it. Uh, they never feel full. They always need this constant urge to eat. That is by far the most debilitating characteristic of the disease. Um, and as a result, um, um, some of the, you know, main endpoints that we look at in a Prader-Willi syndrome study are slightly different to those that you would uh, see in hypothalamic obesity, for example. Um, there are about 8,000 to maybe 11,000 patients in the U.S. with Prader-Willi syndrome. I should have said earlier, there may be three and a half to maybe 5,000 patients in hypothalamic obesity uh, in the U.S. Uh, so obviously both are rare diseases. Um, when it comes to Prader-Willi syndrome, we conducted a phase 2A. Uh, initially, the phase 2A uh, targeted adults. It was a three-month study, uh, placebo-controlled study in adults. Um, when that study was uh, completed, we then uh, initiated another study in adolescents. The first three months were a placebo-controlled phase in the adolescents. After the three-month study, all patients were offered the opportunity to go on active treatment for an extra th uh, three months. Uh, and after that, we did a dose adjustment uh, and actually escalated the dose and offered the patient uh, to move on to the escalated dose again. So the adolescents all in all were uh, on, on the phase two trial for about nine months in total, which is quite a long phase two A study. But based on the results, you know, the, the, the primary endpoint was hyperphagia. Uh, and what we did see is um, a significant difference, uh, definitely in the adults, uh, uh, first three months. Um, however, when we moved to the adolescents, we decided to reduce the dose because they were younger patients, uh, but primarily because um, the plasma levels in the adults seemed to be a bit high and we didn't want to then do the same um, or have the same effects in the adolescents, so we reduced the dose. And initially, the dose uh, of 0 0.125 um, uh, proved to be uh, too low of a dose when it comes to adolescents. We transferred all the patients after three months to that low dose and didn't see really much of an effect. But then we increased the dose in the open label, uh, in the second open label extension. And that is when we started to see a decline in hyperphagia. So this was a phase two A. It was exploratory. Uh, and it taught us a lot. Um, but mostly what it helped us was really define and understand what we need to do as we move into a phase 2B trial, um, uh, which will be done here in the U.S., uh, and what are the appropriate doses that we need to target. And it was very clear based on the adult uh, results, while they were very good, there were some um, uh, safety um, uh, risks that we don't, uh, we don't want to have. And therefore, as we go into the phase 2B trial, we are going to focus on three doses um, for, uh, 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 for the Prader-Willi syndrome uh, patients. Uh, the, the, the phase 2B study is a 16-week study, um, four arms, placebo versus a low dose of 0 0.125, 0 0.25, and 0 0.375. And in discussions with the FDA, 
the feeling is that th these are the right doses to explore. And as I said, if these results at the end uh, are robust, then uh, the FDA will consider the phase 2B as, as a registration trial. And if we need some more data, then we already have that baked in to go into a phase 3 study.